Hello, my name is Chris Frey, and today I'm going to show you how to install Password Pusher on Dockage. So, a little bit about this series is I'm going to go over a home lab, so installing things, getting things set up, everything like that. So, if you're interested in that, subscribe, comment, like, and support the channel, and let's get started. Hello, just wanted to pop in here real quick and tell you about your community options in the Big Bear community. You can join our discourse, which is our forum, or you can join our Discord. Um, so join those both. And when you join, ask questions, answer questions if you can. I'm really trying to build a helpful and supportive tech community. So let's get back to your video. So this is what I'll be installing today, Password Pusher. It's on GitHub, so you can see the source code. It's uh, open source. So you can securely share sensitive information with automatic expiration and deletion after a set number of views or duration. Uh, track who, what, and when with full audit logs. So uh, this is all the features that it has. And here's some screenshots. So this is what I'll be installing today on Dockage. So before we get into installing it, this is what you will get at the end of this install. You'll, you'll be able to enter the password, the, the settings for the expiration. You can generate a password of the settings uh, for, for one click a retrieval setup, allow immediate deletion, you put a passphrase on it, and then you can push and then get the link. So this is the gist of what we will be installing today. So now I'm going to start on Big Bear Video Assets, and there will be a link down in the YouTube description to get to this. I'm going to go over the search and type password, and then you'll see a dockage right here. I'm going to go down to the, uh, the Docker Compose, and then click it. So now I'm in the Docker Compose. So the first is services, and then the service underneath the service is, is called Big Bear P PW Push. And then the container name is going to be called Big Bear PW Push. And this is a Docker does not have to generate a random name. And then the image is coming off of Docker by default because there's no year before this. This is the Docker image. This is the Docker image tag. And then the container restart policy is set to unless stop. So that means if you stop it for any reason, it will not try to restart. But if it fails any other reason, then it will try to restart. And then... Or now to the environment variables. So the database URL is where all the data is stored. So this container right here is going to connect to this service right here for the MariaDB. Um, so th these should rhyme username, password, and then the service name, the port, and the database name. So these should rhyme with the environment variables down here. And then uh, the password expiration settings, uh, these are the default settings. You can ch uh, change these if you'd like. Volumes right here. So what we have one volume. It's Big Bear PW Push Storage. And that is a local volume that's defined down here. And then on the container side is Opt uh, pa Password Pusher Storage. And then Read Write. So ports down here, so 5100 is on the host. If this does collide with another port on your host, you can change it. And then on the container is 5100. Networks down here, so we're going to need to define a network and then put these two services in the same network so we can use the service name right here. And um, now... We're underneath the services, and then we're going to go into the Big Bear PW Push DB service. So the container name is going to be called Big Bear PW Push uh, DB, and that's so Docker does not have to generate a random name. The image is coming off of Docker by default, but because there's no URL before this, and this is the, the Docker image, this is the Docker image tag. Now, with the image tags right here, you do not ch need to ch change that. And also, uh, to do updates to this, you'll need to come back to this repository uh, because the repository does update automatically. So you can just co a copy and paste this right into your dockage. 
So the container restart policy is set to the same one, so unless stops. So that means if you stop it for any reason, it will not try to restart. But if it fails any other reason, then it will try to restart. And then the ports. So 3306 is on the host side. And then on the container side, is 3306. The environment variables right here. So the MariaDB user, the password, the database, and then the root password. And the root password is dynamically generated. So it's set to yes. So it is generated with a random one. So volumes. So now we're in the volume. So Big Bear PW Push DB. That's on the host side. And that is a local volume that's defined down here. And then on the container side is var lib mysql. Do not change the cont container side. Uh, and also on these ports right here, do not change the right side of these ports. And then now we're going to put this service right here, the DB service, inside the same network. So the same network and the same network. This is the a Big Bear a PW Push a network right here. And then this is the DB. So now we're going to define the volumes. So, and then we're going to define the networks. It's a bridge network. So I'm going to go ahead and copy raw file. I'm going to click it and then I'm going to go over my dockage and get this installed. Hello, I just wanted to pop in here real quick and tell you how much I appreciate all my subscribers and also you watching this video. So, um, it takes a lot of time to make all these videos and also maintaining all the open source projects that go along with all these videos. So, um, like Big Bear Cost OS, Big Bear Video Assets, Big Bear Scripts, they all take almost daily maintenance. So, um, if you would, please consider donating. Very much appreciate it. And it helps me continue to be able to help as many people as possible be able to do all this. So, I, uh, my goals in each one of these videos and each one of the things that I make is to make it extremely easy for anybody to do it. And uh, it takes a lot of time to make that ha happen. So um, if you would, please consider donating. Uh, and also you can join the Big Bear Club and continue to, uh, donating. So um, thank you very much. And let's get back to your vi video. So I'm going to start on my dockage and I'm going to go up to compose right here. And then I'm going to put a stack name in of password pusher. And now I'm going to go over to the editor right here. And I'm going to paste in what I copied from Big Bear Video Assets. Once we do that, we're going to go ahead and deploy. And what this is doing is it downloads the Docker himself the registry, getting extracted, and getting it up with Docker Compose underneath because this is using the Docker engine. It's also setting up the networks and the volumes. So you can watch the logs right here. This is great for debugging. And you can go to the UI right here. So... We got it installed. So now I'm going to go over the app in Dockage. So uh, on the Dockage uh, home screen, you'll see active, exit, and inactive stacks. So that's the statuses of these. So if we go into the stack, password pusher right here, and you can see actions up here. So edit, restart, update. This updates the current tag on the uh, Docker images. So if this was a latest tag, uh, it would pull down the changes from the uh, latest tag, but it won't change the tag inside of the editor. You will need to do that manually. So uh, you can stop this stack. You can stop an inactive and then delete the stack right here. You can see the containers in the stack. So you can see the ports that they're running on. And you can also go into each one with bash. There we go. And SSH. So if we go back to the stack, you can do that with the uh, the DB as well. And you can see that we're in the DB. So we can go back to stack. And you can see the uh, console logs down here. And you can also use Dozzle if you want to install that on Dockage. I have a video for that as well. Um, then you can see that they're all running fine in the DB. So if we go back to Dockage, go to back to, to the pa a password pusher, uh, you can see a read-only version of the Docker Compose over here. And if you want to edit it, you just go into the edit button right here, 
And if you want to add a service underneath the services, you can just do this and add cont container and that's a service underneath the services right here. So you can also go into here and through the UI and add an image in and you can see it did add right here. So it's underneath the services. So we can just go ahead and delete that and you can add a URL. You can set environment variables and network, so internal and external networks. And you can also edit the uh, Docker Compose from over here, and then it will show up in the UI over here as well, So and vice versa. And now when you edit the Docker Compose, you'll need to deploy it or save it. And you can do stop it inactive, and then you can discard the changes that you've done. So I'm going to discard. So that's a little bit about the app in Dockage. So now I'm going to show you where your files are located. So I'm SSH into my Dockage. So um, I, I, you'll, you'll go in through the server on, on this. So I'm going to do CD var lib docker and then volumes. So now I'm going to ls. And now you'll see the two lo local volumes right here. So um, we can go ahead and CD Big Bear and then PW push and then uh, underscore DB. Now you will need to go into the underscore uh, data directory. Now we're in here. So that's where your volumes are located. So now I'm going to go in the UI and show you that it works now. So I'm going to start on my Dockage homepage, and you'll go to Password Pusher right here. Now you can go to the uh, the UI from the port uh, on clicking right here, or you can t uh, t uh, type this port into your browser with the Dockage IP, and then this port right here, so your, uh, your host port. I'm going to go ahead and click on the port now. So now we're inside of the UI. So uh, we can go ahead and uh, generate a password, and then uh, there we go. You can also put your custom password in here as well. You can change the expiration dates, so we can just say expire this in four days, or uh, if it, if it gets uh, four views, then whichever comes first. So you can uh, turn on the use uh, a one-click a retrieval step. And this helps avoid chat systems and URL scanners. Um, you can allow immediate deletion, so allow users to delete this push once retrieved. You can turn that off or on. Um, so we can go ahead and put a passphrase in. So we can do, uh, uh, do this, so it's one extra step. So I'm going to go ahead and push. And now you see the URL up here. And you can also see the QR code that is generated. You can print and share this. And it also t t tells you when this will be deleted. Um, so I'm going ahead and I'm going to copy this. And I'm going to open up a new tab and go to it. Now we're in that one-click retrieval step. So we can go ahead and click here to proceed. Now we can put a passphrase in that we put in when we created it. So I put password. So I'm going to say go. Now you can see the password that we generated. So you can co copy to cl a clipboard. You can delete this secret now completely. So if we go ahead and just delete this, delete, and now it's gone. So that's a little bit about password pushers UI. So I just went over step-by-step step on getting Password Pusher running on your dockage. So if you like this tutorial, subscribe, comment, like, and support the channel. And if you have any video suggestions or any community support, you can go down to the Big Bear community and join our forum. There's a link in the YouTube description. So stay tuned for more.